Well, amen. I am thrilled to be here with you all today. I, I have to tell you where I was this last week so we can get it over before he starts slandering me. I was in the Bahamas this past week preaching. I just want you to know, preaching. And I um, really was. I was at the airport yesterday, and um, they at the airport know me quite well. And um, they asked me where I was last week. I told them I was in the Bahamas, and one guy says, you don't have any sun on you. I said, it's because some of us work. But anyway, <laughs> and uh, so I, we had, I really did have preaching. We went down there and preached a youth conference, a youth meeting down there. And um, I tell you right now, this feels good in here. It was hot down there, I'm telling you. And I live in Texas. When I say it's hot, it's hot. It was, it was, it was, it was not just hot, it was just stuffy. You know what I'm talking about? And uh, when the air's not moving and it's about 100 degrees inside, that is miserable. And, um, you know, and I'm one of those type of preachers, I never take my suit coat off while I'm preaching. And so my suits were ruined. They're going to the cleaners this week. Amen. Amen. Yeah, they're going to be standing up on their own. And um, I had a good time down there. Got back on Friday night and then left out yesterday to come here. Been looking forward to this meeting for a while. And um, good to see Caleb looks a little bit happier for some reason. I can't figure it out. Um, can't figure it out why that is. And um, I was going to tell him to get his arm off her, but then I remembered they got married. And um, but anyway, so you can keep your arm around her, amen. And I'm thrilled that you're here. This is the ugly row right here. And um, but some are up. Don't. No, I was talking about you. Don't be looking at them. You know, take heed unto thyself. But anyway. And um, but thrilled that you're here. Thank you so much for coming and preacher. Thank you for letting me come. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. We're going to start reading in verse 16. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16. Brother Gills, I'm sorry to hear about your sister. I'm certainly praying for you this week. And um, do I, I, I understand. I've never lost a sibling. I've lost parents and, and loved ones, but never a sibling. And so I will certainly be praying for you there. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16. If you haven't, say amen. amen. The Bible says in verse 16, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Let me just stop right here. Let me just start this out by saying something very clearly so you understand something about God. God is an absolute God. Right. There is no gray area with God. We live in a day where everybody is trying to create these gray areas. And um, there is no gray area with God. God's a God. It's either right or it's wrong. Yes, Simple sir. as that. Yes, you're either walking in the Spirit or you're walking after the lust of the flesh, one yes. or the other. Yes. And somewhere we have got to get in our minds. And, let, and, and listen, we as independent Baptists, we've got, we, we cannot cower to the pressure of the world that tries to get us to let down and, and try to say, well, you know, it's not that bad. It's either bad or it's not bad. That's right. It's either wrong or it's not wrong. It's either a sin or it's not a sin. Sin right. that, I don't know what's so hard about that. I mean, you know, it takes a rocket scientist. You're either going up or down. You know, there's no in between. Uh, it's either hot or cold. Somebody help me out. Amen. And, uh, you know, and that's just the way it is. And God is that way. You know what? And the sooner, I know this has nothing to do with the lesson, but I might as well just go or I'm going somewhere with this. The sooner we understand that in life, truly, the easier life then becomes. That's right. Because then I now have to find out, is this right or wrong? Period. If it's wrong, I'm not going to do it. If it's right, I am going to do it. it. It's that simple. That's right. what that's what helps you to make right decisions. If you if you get if you start creating gray areas, that's where right. decisions that's right. become difficult. That's right. Listen, God knew that decisions are hard. Yes, sir. So he made it, you know, when we have, you know, you ever gone to, what's that, ice cream, 51, 50 something flavors? Help me out. What was oh, that? Baskin Robbins. You ever go there? 31 flavors. 31 flavors. Thank you. You've been there a few times. I mean, this is Ice Cream Sunday. We did, we just canceled church. Anyway, and, um, but, but you, you know what I'm talking about. You go there and you have all those flavors. It's like, man, you know, if they just had two flavors. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Come on, somebody help me out. If they just had moose tracks, we'd be okay. Somebody help me out on that right now. You know, that would sell a lot. And that's what God does in, the, in His Word. He just makes it this. You have this and this. Now, which are you going to choose? Yes. Then He says in verse 19, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, 
envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. This is a pretty bad list. Yes, sir. And let me say this, though. And sometimes, and we're not going to go into this, this list today, but let me just say this. You would do, do yourself good to go home and figure out what these words are. Amen. But let me say this. Everybody, everybody under my voice is capable of committing any of these sins when we walk in the flesh. Yes, sir. Don't ever think that you're above this. You yes. never are. We are all capable of doing anything. That's why when someone falls, it, it, it ought to be a reminder, whoa, let me back up a little bit. Yes. Not to criticize them, but to look at me. So I say, well, am I, am I on that path? Yes, sir. He says, of the which I tell you for, as I've told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of any glory, provoking one another, envying one another. I want to take verses 22 and 23. We're probably only going to get to 22 this morning. And I want to take verses 22 and 23, and I want to talk, I want to help the homes a little bit this morning. I'm a big proponent of the home. I'm a, I'm a big proponent of marriage. And by the way, marriage is between a man and a woman. Amen. Yes, sir. Right. That's right. Just make that one very clear right now. Yes, sir. Um, there is no, there is no, there's nothing called a transgender. That is, right. that's a choice. You're either male or female. That's right. And God ordained marriage that men and women get married. Period. Amen. God's the one who instituted it. Amen. I think God should know what it is if He's the one who instituted it. Somebody say amen right there. It would be like me telling Henry Ford that's not a car. Um, I'd be kind of stupid to do that. It is a car. And um, and if I want something else, then I need to create it. But the problem is it doesn't make it right. Yes, um, and, and God knows what, what a marriage is. It's between a man and a woman. But I want to talk to you this, uh, this morning on the subject, who's pulling the strings? Who's pulling the strings? Father... Take these next few minutes and the Lord allow me to help some people. I know we have several in here, young people that are not even married, but one day they will be. And But these truths will affect their relationship with their mom and dad. Lord, allow me to be your mouthpiece. Let me help your people, please. In Jesus' name, amen. Every man likes to make this statement, and don't, man, don't you dare leave me here by myself. Every man likes to make this statement, I'm the head of the house. Amen. Thank you. And all three of you. But anyway, I'm the head of the house. And as soon as the man says that, woman jumps in. Woman says, but I'm the neck. It turns the head. Right. Come on now. <laughs> and all of a sudden, what you have is you have two people fighting against each other for control of the home. <laughs> well, when you have two people trying to get control of the home, all of a sudden, teenager jumps in. Teenager sees this. The teenager sees the weakness. So the teenager jumps in. And let me let me tell you right now, these teenagers are not as innocent as they look. Of course, look at this proof. They don't look innocent anyway. But uh, but they're not but they're not as innocent as they look. And so they jump in and they start playing mom against dad. Come on now. Because now they want to be in control of the home. And sadly, in a lot of homes, that's the case. That's the way it is. Yes, right. And so now you've got husband and wife and teenager all trying to get control of the home. Now let me just say this. I've learned anything with more than one head is a monster. That's right. Yes, sir. Amen. And the truth is, the reason why our homes are monstrous in America is because we've never settled who's the head of the home. That's right, preacher. You ever see those puppets? They have a little sticks on the top and the puppeteers kind of jerking that puppet around. That's we, we want to be the one in our home with our hand on that stick. You know, we're fighting each other for that for that stick. Yes, sir. And we're trying to grab it, you know, the husband wants to grab it and tell the wife, wife, put your right hand up. Why put the right hand left, you know, and the wife's trying to grab and say, husband, shut your mouth. You know, you're trying to, you're just, it's just, it's everybody's fighting. Yes. Let me help you out. 
God doesn't want any of us to have our hand on that stick. That's right. Follow me now. He wants His Holy Spirit to be the one who controls the home. Now follow me. When the Holy Spirit controls the home, the husband will be the head of the home. And the wife will submit to his leadership. And the children will obey mom and dad. Yes, sir. Amen, Amen Brother Donnelly. Yes, and when you have that, you have a home that is at peace with each other. Now, in verse 18, it says, But if ye be led of the who? Spirit. The Spirit. You're not under the law. Let, don't, let me explain that word law. And I know this, we're talking about salvation, but let's apply it to the home. The word law means this. It means no restraint, no regulations, no commands, no orders. Let me put it this way. No preconceived. I read it down to one definition. No preconceived idea. Uh -huh. So, when, God's, when, when we're talking about the home and he says you're not under the law, he says when you're being led of the Spirit, get this now, you're not under the law. In other words, you have no preconceived idea what it takes for somebody to be a good whatever. For instance, when you're led of the Spirit, um, husbands, you don't you don't have an entitled. Well, you'd be a good wife yeah. if. Yeah. Yeah, sure. And ladies, you would never say you'd be a good husband if. And, ch and young people, you'd never say to mom and dad, well, you'd be good parents if. Yes. You know what I've learned? <laughs> I've learned if we had what we wanted. We still wouldn't be happy. That's right. You know why? Because we're selfish individuals. That's right. And when we get what we want, listen, what happens is now we, we got it, so we always want more, do we not? Yes, right. sir. Amen. And, and God says, now listen, He says, I want you. He said, I want you to understand, you, you've got to be led of the Spirit. Amen. Now, when we are led of the Spirit, there is a fruit that happens, there is a result. That happens. When God says the fruit of the Spirit is, He's saying the result of being led of the Spirit is this. Now, let, now follow me very carefully. This list that God gives us is not, well, I'll take this one and I'll take this one. I, you know, I don't want that one right there, but I'll take right. this one over here. You have to understand, this is a this is a building block type of list. Yes, sir. It is one brick upon the other. It is one line upon line, precept upon precept. In other words, you never get to the second one until you get the first one down. And if you get the first one down, the second one now starts kicking in. The second one is the result of the first. So if you and I get the first down, the second one starts coming. It's a natural result. But you'll never get to the second without getting the first. Now, right. let's go, let's look at this first, this list in verse 22. He says, but the fruit of the Spirit is, what's the first word? Love. Love. Underline the word love and put this beside it, no fine print. No fine print. When God says the fruit of the Spirit is love, He says there's no fine print to my love. Now I want you to follow me very carefully. In our homes, we cannot have fine print to our love. Because there is no fine print to love. Well, I love you. If. No, no, no there's no if. Come on. You know, oftentimes we have we have expectations for our love. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you right now, most homes, the reason why we never get we never even settle the very foundational thing of love. Illustration. I said that love means no fine print. Several years ago, I was I was going through about two to three pieces of luggage a year with as much as I fly. And, and if you've ever bought luggage, it gets expensive. And I told my wife, I said, honey, I said, we've got to do something to stop this. I said, this is getting expensive. Buying luggage, you know, you're buying three, you know, three pieces of luggage a year. You start adding that up. That's four or five hundred dollars a year right. just in luggage. And so I started shopping for a piece of luggage and trying to find something. And I stumbled across this company that they had a guarantee. Their guarantee was a lifetime unconditional guarantee. I thought to myself, nobody, nobody's going to have a lifetime unconditional guarantee. 
So I began to read up. I went to the website, began to read up on the guarantee. And this is what they put on the website at the time. I don't know if it's there now. But at the time, they said, we stand behind our guarantee so much. Then if you don't believe us, buy the luggage, take it home, run over it with your car, cut it up with a knife, light it on fire, burn it up, send it back to us, we'll replace it. I thought, yeah, that's a good way to make some money. <laughs> so I didn't really believe the lifetime unconditional guarantee, so I called up the company. And I got a salesperson on the phone, and I said to the lady, I said, ma'am, I said, looking at this piece of luggage right here, and I said, I noticed that you said it is a lifetime, unconditional guarantee. I said, ma'am, I said, when does the guarantee stop? She said, sir, it's a lifetime, unconditional guarantee. I said, ma'am, I said, you and I both know Nobody has a lifetime unconditional guarantee. She said, we do. I said, ma'am, I said, let's, let's be honest with each other. I said, I'm serious about this, but I said, I really want to know. I said, ma'am, when does the shoe drop? And money has to come out of my pocket three places. She goes, sir. What do you not understand <laughs> about lifetime, unconditional guarantee? And, you know, you want, to, you want to reach through the phone and slap somebody when they start doing that stuff. And I, you know, and, and so I, I got off the phone. And I began, I, I, it took me a couple of weeks to really get there. You say, why did it take you so long? Because at the time, that one piece of luggage cost $550. <laughs> You know, you don't have to mortgage a house, but if I'm going to, I mean, this, this thing better be real, because if I buy it and it's not real, I'm going to go kill somebody. <laughs> I finally bought the luggage. It has now been probably 13, 14, 15 years since I bought it, right through there. They've replaced it twice. They've repaired it several times, and it needs to be repaired again right now. But they, but I mean... And I've never had any money come out of my pocket. That's what you call a lifetime unconditional guarantee. May I say this to the married couples? May I say this to everybody? That's what love is. That's right. Love is a lifetime unconditional guarantee. Yes. Listen, we often hear people say, well, love is 50-50. May I help you out? No, it's not. That's right. Then I hear other people say, well, love is 100-100. Again, uh, you're wrong. Ready? Love is 100-0. You give 100%, expect 0% back. That's right. Listen, for God so loved the world that he what? Gave. Gave. He didn't say, I'm expecting you to give anything back. He said, I'm giving. Yes, sir. I'm giving. Listen to me. Somewhere in our marriages and in our homes, we've got to get to this point that we understand that true love is not about what I get. True love is trying to meet the needs of your spouse. That's right. Let me just say this, and I'm going to be very careful because there's a mixed multitude here, but let me just say this. we got to be careful that we don't start manipulating people to get what we want. You husbands know what you have to do to get from your wife what you want. And your wives know what to do to get from your husband what you want. But may I say this, when you start, when your love is, this, it, husbands and wife are manipulating each other to get what they want. Then one of our teenagers grow up manipulated, manipulative. Tell you why. Because they think that's what love is. Because they learned it from guess who? Yeah. Mom and dad. Yeah. Amen, Brother Donald. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And listen, until we get the foundation done, we're not going to even move further. That's right. Amen. We're not going to move further. Man, that, yeah. And the reason why so many of our homes are a mess is because we've never even got the foundation down. Amen. 
Amen. It's good preaching right now. <laughs> Not even preaching, just teaching. Listen to me. When you get love down, you'd be amazed what starts happening when you get love down. But I said, first of all, love is no fine print. Number two, the fruit of the Spirit is love. Then what's the next one? Joy. joy. Underline the word joy. Put this beside it. Content with what you have. Content with what you have. Now, follow me carefully. When you, when you, when you get love down, and there's no fine print to your love, you will find joy yes. immediately starts taking in. Why? Because the joy is being content with what you have. What do you have? You got love. That's right. Listen, joy is not dependent upon what's on the outside. Joy is dependent upon what you have on the inside. inside. Yes. Amen. For instance, I hate that white stuff that falls from the sky. It's called snow. Snow. Quiet. Snow is a four-letter word. That's right. I hate it. I hate it. That's why I live in Texas. Praise the Lord. Now listen, if I'd have woke up this morning, there'd been five feet of snow, I'd have called up your pastor and said, I'm going home. No, just kidding you. I, it wouldn't have affected what's going on. You know why? Because it's not outside circumstances that determine my joy. That's right. It's what I have on the inside. Amen. Now listen to me, husbands and wives and young people. Listen to me. When you get loved down, you'd be amazed how joyful life becomes. Yes, sir. Let me just be, let me become a little personal. And I know you have a hard time believing I can become personal. But let me get a little personal. Yes, ladies, let me talk to you first. Ladies, some of you ladies are killing your husband. See, what do you mean by that? Is because you're never happy with what he provides. <laughs> you say amen, man. Amen. I'll get to you in a second. You can say because you're single. <laughs> Listen, and ladies, I don't think you even I don't even think you mean no, even know what you're doing when you say this. I don't think you mean it in a, in a bad way. But you look at your home. Your husband works hard to give you the home he had that you have. But, you know, when you, when you say, you know, this should be the perfect home. If. Yeah. Wow, let's move on. But anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And ladies, you don't understand. There, you, there comes a point where your husband is so frustrated. Because he does his best to give you something. And you gripe. And you complain. And what you don't understand, eventually your husband's just going to shut down. Because he's tired of it. Well, I'd give an altar call right now. <laughs> but man, let me say this. You're just as guilty. Because your wife... Is doing everything she can to keep you happy, but you're never happy. She cooks her favorite meal, and then you come home, and you sit down and say, what's missing? Well, your brain is missing. That's what's missing. <laughs> huh? Yes. You know, she does the laundry. You come walk in. She can clean the house and maybe leave something, you know, your little pet peeve. And you walk in the house, and you start barking orders. It's never good enough. Joy. Yeah, Joy. Yes. Content with what you have. Yes. But let me go a step further. I said first, love is no fine print. Second, joy is content with what you have. And then he says, look, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, what? Peace. peace. Underline the word peace and puts this beside it, content with who you are. Content with who you are. You know, when you are content with what you have, you'd be amazed how you become content with who you are. Now, ladies, let me talk to you just a little bit, and I'll get to you in a second again. Ladies, stop comparing yourself to Hollywood stars. Yes. You've not had 10 facelifts and 15 liposuction sessions. Say that one about 10 times. 
And have you ever seen Hollywood when they stop getting the face lift and the face drops? I will take the beauty that God gives a lady Amen. any day of what Hollywood produces. That's right. right. Yes, sir. Amen, Amen to that. Amen. Yes, sir. Ladies, you, I, listen, I've yet to find the lady who thinks that she's pretty. <laughs> I'm just being honest. You know what I'm saying is true. Yeah. Every lady, oh, you always see something ugly about yourself. Ladies, stop it. Yeah. Stop it. Stop rubbing or robbing your husband of you. You have to understand, God gave your husband eyes for you. And when you're trying to compare yourself, you think that you're ugly and you're, and you're always, listen, be, be at peace with who God made you to be. But men, let me go a step further and say this. Um, you're not going to get that six pack again. <laughs> wow. Because you got a keg and maybe a couple growing on. Come on now. You might want to testify right now. My daughter few years ago when I started getting gray hairs coming in. No comments right now, especially from the peanut gallery. I, up here. I see it coming in. <laughs> yeah, I, like I said, the peanut gallery. But anyway, like father, like son. But anyway, I was, I was sitting in the car. I was driving. My daughter, she's looking at me and she sees the gray hair and she goes, Dad, you're getting gray. I'm looking at my, I look back at my daughter and she's a teenager. You know, the brain goes out of, on vacation. I said, no, I'm not. She goes, no, Dad, you're getting gray. And then, she says, you know, Dad, they make hair coloring for men. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and she is as sincere as can be. And I looked at my daughter and I said, oh, no, they don't. She goes, no, Dad, really, they do. I said, oh, no, they don't. I said, men go gray and men go bald, but men don't color their hair. <laughs> Come on now. Who am I fooling? I am 48 years of age. The gray hairs do come in. The body doesn't, doesn't perform the way it used to perform. Who am I fooling? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Be at peace with yourself. But I want you to notice the next word. He says long-suffering. What is long-suffering? Content with who others are. Content with others. Content with others. Listen to me. When you're at peace with yourself, you'd be amazed how you become at peace with others. The reason why we pick others apart is because we're not at peace with ourselves. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The only reason why you're picking your spouse apart is because you don't want them to be complete because you feel incomplete. Let me go on one other. He says, through the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering. What's the next one? Gentleness. gentleness. I don't like the word gentleness, but just beside it. Content with adverse circumstances. Content with adverse circumstances. We'll stop on this word right here, but listen to me very carefully. When you're content, when you have love down, and you're content with what you have, and who you are, and who others are, then you'd be amazed how you become content with the adversities of life. Right. When we moved down to Texas, I sold my car, and um, we had we were down to the Durango. So my wife, it was the day after New Year's Day. It was New Year's Day, and so my wife and daughter wanted to go do some shopping. And she said, do you, "She goes, honey, do you mind if I go do some shopping?" I said, "No, go ahead." So she went. She, and my daughter, went shopping. Me and the dog stayed home and. And, um, you know, like every man, he, who what man wants to go shopping? But we're, so she's out shopping. And it was about an hour and a half, and all of a sudden I get my phone rings. And I look, and I see it's my wife, and so I pick it up, and I said, hello. First words out of my wife's mouth. She's never done this in all the years we've been married. She says, honey, I hope you don't get upset with me. Uh -oh. <laughs> and then, my first thought, how much money did she spend? <laughs> And I said, Sandy, what'd you do? 
She goes, honey, she goes, I was in an accident. I said, who hit you? She said, no one. I said, who'd you hit? She said, no one. I said, honey, you said you was in an accident. She goes, honey, do you know where, and she told me the store, she goes, you know where the big sign is out in the parking lot? It's a sign where nobody drives. Right. Nobody drives. <laughs> big old eye beams that hold that big sign up. Somebody help me out right now. Yeah. It was like she took dead aim for that eye beam to hit it right where the emblem of the Durango is. Folded the hood back to the dashboard in a parking lot. And she told me this. My first response was this. Are you okay? She says, I am. I said, is Katie okay? She goes, yes, she is. I said, then it's going to be okay. I said, honey, I said, we can replace a car. I can't replace you and I can't replace Katie. I said, it'll be okay. Amen. That's what you call being gentle. Yeah. Yeah. Several years ago, my daughter was young. We, I think we still lived in Indiana at the time. And you ever have one of those slow motion moments where you know something bad's happened, but you just can't, it's like you're frozen time, trying, trying to get there fast enough. You know what I'm talking about. My daughter's sitting on my lap, my laptop's open, she has a glass of Kool-Aid, don't get ahead of me. Uh -oh. And it was like, I knew what was about right, but I couldn't stop it. Just couldn't stop it. And the next thing I know, the whole glass of Kool-Aid was on my it was on the keyboard of my laptop. Yeah. I'm grabbing that laptop, shaking it up and down, trying to get all the liquid out. I'm trying to save the laptop. Yeah. I look out of the corner of my eye. My daughter has that frightened look, like Dad's going to kill me. <laughs> I set the computer down, put my arm around my daughter, and I said, "Honey, it's okay. Mistakes happen." He said, well, I wish I could respond that way. That's the only two times in my entire life I have to. <laughs> Come on now. Straighten up your halo. Isn't it amazing how we let things, things, destroy our relationships? Yeah, preacher, that was in my family for 100 years. Wonderful. Somebody started it, you finished it, and now nobody else has to worry about it. Well, <laughs> yeah. uh, yes, sir. Huh? Gentle. Don't let things destroy the relationship. Preacher. Yeah. 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 Y